It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. Spread between 4th and 6th Streets in downtown Minneapolis. We welcome you inside spacious U.S. Bank Stadium. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Indianapolis Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew, coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod, Kirk Cousins. Not bad for a fourth-round draft pick. Well over 100 career starts now. And the chemistry with his top targets, really on point. They spend a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well, and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field. And when they get open, he delivers. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second and five now. Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Play action now, Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 22. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 
Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Cousins on first down. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. DeForest Buckner breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long though. Cousins to throw it. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, the offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Hey, yikes, terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt goes out of bounds. Where will they put it? They'll put it just inside the 45-yard line. Indy's offense takes the field for the first time. We take a look at Matt Ryan, top 10 all-time in passing yards playing his first career season outside of Atlanta. And when you start with listing a guy's accomplishments like Matt Ryan's all these years in the league, near the top of the league in completions and percentage, touchdowns each and every year, has won an MVP, taken his team to the Super Bowl. You're talking about a guy who might be finished, but he still has gas left in the tank. Big right arm, great leader, the face of his franchise. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10 at their own 44. Here's Ryan to throw. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle likes that call. Big play for him, but don't forget about the guys you always tell me on the backside sealing off. When they talk about cutoff blocks, making sure no one can leak from the backside that can run a play down. Yeah, nobody leaked. Big play. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, it's Ryan. 
Flushed out right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4, you've got to have you guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Got a man. It's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts' touchdown. A great effort there. 28 yards. And the Colts are on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And this is good to make it 7-0 Indy. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was capped off on the touchdown catch by Michael Pittman. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. a jet sweep to start the drive and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one but defensively they had that one pretty well figured out yeah and one of the things about this play it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off on second and nine Cousins, his throw incomplete. But we keep stats on everything, don't we? This is one that you don't want to have. That's his second drop right here in the first quarter. Yeah, I was going to say only in the first quarter. Certainly a shift that he wants to write quickly. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. 
Throwing. Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. First down. Here's Cousins. And Cook has it. Left side. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Play fake, Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Now Cook running right. Gets around him. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they? Moving the ball. Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. Here's Cousins. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Off the play fake, Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Five yards, now it's third and five. Cousins. Forced out to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. The Colts' D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. It's nothing like pressure to affect the accuracy and the timing of a guy trying to throw the football. And on that play, they ended up flushing him to his left, contacted him as he's trying to throw the football, and that led to the incompletion. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. And it bangs off the left upright and deflects away. It's no good. And this will stay at a seven-point game. So he had a chance to get him on the board there, but unfortunately that big yellow metallic structure in the back of the end zone, it had other plans. And that's when we're kickers watching it the whole way saying, oh no, don't hit it. Rats. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. I have to be thrilled with that first drive that got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Ryan. And that one drops down, incomplete. 
Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Ryan. Got a man. It's complete to Jelani Woods. Finding room at midfield. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10, right at the 40. Here's Ryan. Now this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Second and four. A give for Taylor running right side. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. That time on the outside, pretty nice job as a cornerback to shed any would-be blockers and make the tackle. And think about the praise we're giving him, what his coaches are giving him, but how about the respect he gets from his teammates to be a complete corner who doesn't just cover receivers, but also tackles ball carriers. And he'll find Pittman. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 12-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. On second down, here's Ryan. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tough rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. On third down, Ryan. Sends it toward the sideline. Woods makes the catch. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. 
fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Now Cousins. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. On second down, Cook. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Colts pick it up. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. Do you remember in preseason we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams, and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills yep. and, you know, guys either slapping at the ball or the machines. you got to learn to take care of it. Yeah, they lost it there. Big fumble. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They've got the ball in a great spot here, already inside the red zone following that fumble recovery. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Following the fumble recovery, it's Ryan. Hits his target, the tight end, Mo Alley cox And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second down at four. Now a give to Taylor. No, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return. A scoop and score for the Vikings. Uh, backbreaker. That'll drive the coach. The offensive coordinator just crazy. You get it all the way down there in the red zone. Can't capitalize. Instead, they go the other way on the fumble return for a touchdown. How about the aggressiveness of the defense, though? They're not about to just fall on a fumble, are they? Scoop and score is their motto, and they just did it.
Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10 7 now. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fielded just outside the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. Looking for a bounce back. Had the fumble a moment ago that went for a touchdown the other direction. See if he can get back in rhythm. And you have to be very careful about having too quick of a hook with really good players. I did a guy's game in high school where he fumbled three times in the first quarter, finished with over 300 yards on the night, later ended up in the NFL. If you've got a talented back, give it back to him. On first and 10, it's Ryan. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Ryan. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. And that's caught inside the 30. And it's a big play there as he is finally taken down on what will be a terrific final act of this first quarter. So they will wave off the flag and let the completion stand. Really great job by the receiver fighting through all the contact and still coming down with the football. All that great work and practice being put into the game. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Now Ryan. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And sometimes when you run a screen pass down in the red zone, it's really tough to create a lot of room to operate. The field's pretty condensed. But that was really well designed there, and they're able to pick up a first down.
They'll run the toss here with Taylor. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. And the tackle for loss goes to Eric Kendricks. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. So a five-yard run the other way in the wrong direction, and that leads us to second and 15. They go to the ground again with Taylor, able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. The Colts on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five at this point. This is third down and 12. To throw is Ryan. He'll find Taylor. That's complete. A beautiful fake. And they'll rally and stop him short of the first down at about the six. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves, that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Oh, they pitch to the tight end. It's a fake. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And that will force a turnover on downs. And now out comes Minnesota. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Back near the goal line, Cousins. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. He's got a man complete. A gain of 39 that time. Gets you out of danger so much for playing a conservative towards your own goal. That aggressive mentality, sometimes you can use it, and they did there against the defense who probably thought to themselves, there's no way they take a shot here this deep in their own territory. Just like that, out of danger and up past the 40 now for first and 10. Up the middle, it's Cook. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Throwing his Cousins. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And they're going to get this up to midfield. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there.
They run again on first down. Cook. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. 47 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent gain and first down. Simply put, you've got to put more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw, Cousins. He sets to fire deep. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. To throw is Cousins. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for Knott. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football, and getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. He's got the first down. He's got a big game going right now. Already over 100 yards receiving in this first half alone. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they deliver there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set him up with a first and goal. They'll throw again. Cousins. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way, a dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Third and goal for Cousins. And he'll just get rid of it. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while. But when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. The kick by Joseph is good, and that will knot us up at 10. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early and never gotten a chance to atone for it the rest of the game? That's a lot to carry around. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. This taken in at the goal line. Oh, a good return up past the 30. There he goes left side. And he will score. Touchdown Colts. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. 
The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. McLaughlin for the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. And what a job there by all 11 on the kick return. The blocking excellent, the return excellent. The result, six points. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. This fielded right at the goal line. And out now come the Vikings. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Here's second and nine. Cousins. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Cousins. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Cousins again. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. DeForest Buckner able to get in there yet again. That's already three sacks for him here in this first half of football. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, They've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. They'll look to throw here. Eluding the pressure right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Are we on the same page here, partner? Because I think they have the right idea. Just take what you can get on third and forever. Yeah, in real life, I'd say yes. It's just these video games are tempting. You want to go downfield with it. I like the way you've evolved. Yeah. You know, you've learned how to play it the Madden way. Now here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. 
It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here is Michael Pittman and the rest of this offense getting set for the upcoming drive. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10. At the 39-yard line. He'll start with a give to Taylor. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 59 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to, but they didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 36. They run once more with Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? On second down, it's Taylor. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 26. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On third and one, Ryan. Shedding the tackler and it gives him some room. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. And that, in a nutshell, shows you what this guy is made of. I mean, most guys in the NFL just can't do that. He absorbed the contact, refocused himself, and made a break for the end zone. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Ryan. This will be caught at about the five. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll look to run with Taylor. He lost two there, and it's third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Now it's Ryan. To the right side, complete to Taylor. Touchdown, Colts! Jonathan Taylor from four yards out. And the Colts go up by two touchdowns. Well, CD, you know he's got great options at wide receiver tight end, but there he looks to the backfield, and it results in a touchdown. I love how you laid that out. So many options. You made me forget about some of the ones that you should be covering. And they made them pay with that one, didn't they? You forget about the guys in the backfield. They're eligible, too. McLaughlin now to add the PAT.
And the lead is up to 14. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was all finished off by the Jonathan Taylor touchdown catch. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Take it in at the three. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Cousins on first down. He's got his tight end over the middle, T.J. Hawkinson. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Second and eight. Cousins to throw it. This one into the hands of Thielen. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Here's Cousins. Looking sideline incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Now Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Cousins now. And that is incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. So now on comes the field goal unit. And wow, this is no ordinary try here. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. And now two problems as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which granted was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up with great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Ryan. Over the middle, hauled in by Campbell. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. 
The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Second down and three. Here's Ryan. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. So we come to halftime here with the visiting Colts taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Colts. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200-plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they, too, were able to take advantage of a soft secondary as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Second half, ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. Taken at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Well, the Colts ready to go to work to start the third quarter. and the Colts getting set here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now Ryan. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Well, following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside.
Now it's Ryan. Oh, he's got his tight end, Mo Alley Cox, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. Now Ryan. Campbell making the catch. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Here's Ryan. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 21. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. Again, Ryan. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Well, CD, that's one of those plays you put a mark by. I mean, that could be a big momentum swing here on the opening drive of the third quarter. Yeah, we may have to revisit it, right? Because if that drive ends up in the end zone, they're sitting pretty at that point. Now, instead, it's a two-score game that has a chance to tighten up considerably. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 34. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did. And remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase, show the tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who wants to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. 54 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Justin Jefferson bringing in the slam. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 33. 
15 yards there on the catch and run. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On play action, Cousins. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Off the play fake, Cousins. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. To throw, Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that's going to win the fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And this is just outside the right upright. It's no good, and this will remain a two-touchdown game. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, and one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10 at the 33 yard line. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. The tackle goes to Harrison Smith. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Again, it's Taylor. Shifts past him at the 45. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And connecting here with Pittman on the out route. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Looking to throw again on second down. Ryan, he's got the tight end, Mo Alley cox And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, 
All I keep thinking of myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Offense is moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And some room to run now. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 101 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. I would describe the way that he's played today as mature. He's already moved on mentally from that incompletion, and he's more than ready to throw his next pass downfield. Second and 10. On the handoff, this is Taylor. Oh, a heck of a move. Oh, man. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. From the shotgun, Ryan. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that will extend their lead even further. And right now, Charles, this is about building that lead little by little, and they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number of 16, so this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet. But that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And he'll take it out to the 25. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of a team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to a stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. Second and six, just inside the 30. 
Now Cousins. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Just a gain of a couple there. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Cousins to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Now fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Ryan and the Colts getting set here first and 10 at their 38. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And that'll bring up second down. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and ten. He's going to look deep down the field. And it's knocked away and incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now it's Ryan. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. On first down, Ryan. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And they'll work this down inside the 30. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on. Because right now, he's got the defense so much on their heels. Got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy? And what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? First and 10, Taylor now. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Pass the 20. 
And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Boy, a big play right there. I mean, a touchdown on this drive could have really put some separation on the scoreboard. Instead, it's the defense who scores. And partner, we got a game again. And we do have one because of what you just described. A defense that understood what was going on in this game and did something about it. They knew their offense needed some help. They just provided it. They're back in this one. Joseph now to have the PAT. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. And sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Back to the air, Ryan after the pick six. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. So that one a disaster, a big loss there with second down coming up. But a pretty surprising suboptimal start to the drive there. I like that, suboptimal to put it nicely, right? Because you would think that with all the time they had on the sideline prior to that one, they'd come up with a little bit better play than that one. That was a disaster right from the beginning. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got it for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. Now Ryan. They'll find his man. That's Taylor again. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll be facing a third and 12. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Ryan. This one completes Alec Pierce. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be fourth down. We have played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis as we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. On is the putter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. 
35 yards that time on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Play action now. Cousins. And that's incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing, Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? The Vikings on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 10. Working out of the gun, Cousins. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. And here's Ryan right now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. Now Ryan on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Running straight ahead, Taylor. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And that will be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And this one goes sailing out of bounds. Where did it cross? Well, they're going to say on this side of midfield, the Vikings head out to take over once again. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. 
Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. To throw again on second down. Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10. At their own 43. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw is Ryan. Campbell making the catch. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They trail by two scores in the fourth, and their defense did its job getting the fumble recovery. And time to see what this offense has left in the tank. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. On the handoff, Taylor dances by him. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13. Down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Ryan. 
Over the middle, hauled in by Campbell. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. Now a give to Taylor. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. He's having a big game running the football, but that will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Here's Ryan. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Paris Campbell, a five-yard touchdown. And the Colts are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. An important score there, CD, and now an important extra point because it would make it a three-score game. Love the math there, and at this point in the fourth quarter, look, we all need next-gen stats, right? We all use them, but we don't need them here, do we? Because that means it's almost a certain victory. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out-personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. A first down throw for Cousins. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoor them, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Throwing again on second down. Cousins got his man complete over the middle. It's Osborne, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Cousins on first down. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And you can just see that whole play developing. That's where, as a defender, you just lock in on your target and say, I'm not even thinking about breaking stride. I'm running straight for the belt buckle because where it goes, that's where you find his body. And he was able to get in there and make a great play. And the next-gen stats tell the story as he was traveling at better than 19 miles an hour. Coming up on second and seven. To the air again, it's Cousins. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against
zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Cousins now to throw on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice, long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five to throw. Cousins, and incomplete. They tried to drop it off, but he couldn't hold on. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. Complete. Jefferson to target. And now this is going to depend on the spot. And they say he's just short. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it, the, was it against the right defense? Should they have even gone for it at all? Will that change what they do going forward in this game? A lot of questions to be answered by them. The defense doesn't really care. They're like, bring it on again. We'll stop you the next time, too. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Back to Taylor on first down. And he's got room. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Brandon, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And some room to work. And down inside the 15 he goes. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. Well, Jonathan Taylor, like most guys from Wisconsin, he's not one to shy away from contact. He proved it right there. Yeah, in this part of the game, the fourth quarter, this is where a running back really has a chance to shine. This is what they've been training for to take over the game down the stretch. 
The defense, it's been battered all game long. And here, this is just a case of a runner imposing his will and deciding he didn't want to be tackled right there. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They run with Taylor. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. It'll be a gain of five. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. And his kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but... They'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Take it in at the three. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. But probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end... I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. First down, here's Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Three yards remain for second down. Two. 
to throw is Cousins. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Again, it's Cousins. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, but after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's got a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Cousins now. Catch is made by... Now the ball comes loose. And I believe the Colts have recovered. Yes, they have. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget. Absolutely. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ball game. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games. So when you get something that goes against the grain like the one we saw here, it's quite the oddity. Now, let's face it, they'll be very happy that they pulled this off, but they do know that in the future, they've got work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. 